so you're ready to step up your painting and create smoother transitions and blends. Whether you want a creamy gradation from one color to another or the subtle shift from light and dark, let's go over a few fundamental techniques to help you get there. Let's jump straight into layering. I frequently talk about the layering pyramid, but let's go into a little more detail on that subject. So what is the layering pyramid? It's the idea that each layer of paint is like a layer of stone in a pyramid. Each subsequent layer is smaller and placed on top of our previous layer. In this way, we can create a gradation of colors. Before we begin, I'm painting the cloth white as I plan to do a pink orange color. Pink, orange, and red can be difficult, so I'm giving myself a leg up by putting white down first. I'm lying out the colors I need and mixing them on my palette to create my darkest shadow to my most intense highlight. I'm mixing them up into individual puddles, which will be important later. I usually do three to four layering colors, but it depends on a variety of circumstances. It depends on the size. Hi. It depends on the size of the object. It depends on the. Hi. It depends on the difference between your highlight and shadow, and it depends on how skilled you are at glazing. The more layers that you apply, the less glazing you'll have to do. That's because the more layers you apply, the smaller each step will be between your layers. The greater the step between each layer, you will either need to do a thicker glaze or several passes of thinner glazes. No matter what, you'll want to leave enough space between each layer so that you still have room to glaze. I'm applying my orange highlight color first to get the maximum benefit out of my white base layer I applied previously. I frequently start with my midtone and layer up my highlights and down my shadows. But again, since I'm using this orange pink, I'm going to start with my orange. Now I'm on my second color, but how do I decide where to apply it? It really depends on what you want to be the dominant colors of that part of the miniature. Since I want this fabric to be a orangish pink, I want the highlight in the midtone to cover the majority of this area. Here I'm placing my midtone directly over my base highlight layer. Then I'll place my two shadow colors directly on top of the midtone, making each one smaller than the previous one. To revisit my pyramid reference, at this point we're at a step pyramid. In order to achieve a smooth Egyptian style pyramid, we need to do glazing. That's what's going to fill in each of these steps. The reason we made those separate puddles is so that we can more easily create our glazing colors. You're just going to create a new puddle created by a 50-50 mixture of each of your layering colors. I begin by mixing in about half a brush full of glaze medium from Vallejo. You can always add more glaze medium, so start slow and add gradually. The amount of glaze medium you should add will also depend on the consistency of the original paint and the color of the paint as well. Here you can see the consistency I am going for on the back of my hand compared to the unglazed paint consistency. This glaze is then getting placed directly over the line where one of our layers ends. The step between the layers is particularly large, we can create a mini pyramid to blend these steps together. I usually do this pyramid reverse of how I typically do, where the bottom layers are actually going to be smaller than my top layers. Paint your first layer directly over the line. Wait for it to dry and then apply a second glaze on top of it, spreading it across the larger area than your first layer and will blend until the line is invisible. As you continue to glaze, your glazes are going to get thinner and thinner. But you still want there to be some actual pigment to it. 
If you thin down your paint too much, specifically lighter colors of paint like white, you can begin to get this sort of grainy texture as the pigments themselves begin to become visible inside your glaze medium. Paint can only be thinned so far before it starts to just fall apart. So always test it on the back of your hand before you apply it to your model. If you're having trouble turning paint into a glaze without it becoming grainy, try mixing that exact color and layering it on instead of glazing. After you apply your glaze, you can quickly apply another pass, but be sure to allow your glaze to dry in between each application. Otherwise, you can start to pull up the paint and cause texture, which is the number one way that I personally fuck up my miniatures. Stippling is one of my favorite ways to paint, and I have often talked about how it is great to use in areas where you don't want a perfectly smooth gradation. Well, that is true, but with enough effort, you can actually achieve that perfectly smooth gradation. Again, the secret is glazing. Preferably for stippling, you would use a dry palette, but I always forget that when I'm painting and only ever think about it when I'm doing the voiceover. I'm laying out and mixing my colors, starting with a deep aqua mixed with black, up to a lighter blue and then into a pale flesh color. Highlighting up to this flesh tone is one of my favorite ways to create interesting silver armor. Remember we want this paint to be thick, so no thinning required. Once I have my colors mixed, I begin by applying them to my model. At first I'm doing typical brush strokes, just to get the color down. I'm starting in the shadows because shaded areas are often in the nooks and crannies and are more difficult to paint. But like layering, it doesn't particularly matter where you start. You'll notice I'm using a size zero from Winsor Newton to apply this stipple. Is that right? To apply this stippling. Previously, I recommended using a domed brush and while I still do, Domed brushes are better used to cover a lot of ground very quickly. When I'm using a round brush, I use the side of my brush and tap it against my model. Compared to a domed brush where you push the brush head first onto the surface you are painting. Next, I'm applying my vibrant blue using a stippling motion. I'm applying my paint approximately where I think it will go. But if I'm wrong, that's not a big deal. I can always go back over it later. For the armor, I'm following the reflections on the box art of this model and slowly building up my colors to match. Again, I'm starting with a thicker glaze to fill in these steps or gaps between my colors, and I'm still using a stippling motion to blend these colors together. You could totally be done at this point. Personally, I like my armor to have a bit more texture. However, you could continue to refine this with glazing. It really just depends on how far you want to push it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful and useful to you. If you like what I do here, you can go ahead and support me over on Patreon, where you can join my growing community, receive personalized feedback from me, as well as sign up for monthly private lessons. Otherwise, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, share, you know the drill. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.